Hello and welcome to the Run Testers. My name's Nick and in this video we're going to be comparing the Garmin Epix Pro to the Garmin Forerunner 965. So the Forerunner 965 and the Epix Pro are the two top AMOLED watches in Garmin's range, also including the Garmin Epix 2 I suppose. The big difference between them is price and design. The Epix Pro is a thicker, chunkier, heavier watch with that big metal bezel on the front of it there and it comes in three sizes, a 42mm watch, a 47mm watch and this is the 51mm watch. The three sizes have different size screens going from 1.2 inch to 1.3 inch to 1.4 inch and also has different options in terms of the materials used. So the Base model is a steel bezel with a steel back case and a Gorilla screen. And then you've got the more expensive Sapphire models that have Sapphire crystal screens and titanium bezels and back cases. A little difference on the Epix Pro's design is that it uses a quick fit band, a quick release band, which you don't get on the Forerunner 965. The 965 is a 47 millimeter watch in terms of its case size, but actually has a 1.4 inch screen. So that's the same size as the screen on the 51 millimeter Epix. It has a mostly plastic body, which is much lighter than the uh, Epix Pro watches, but it does have a thin titanium bezel running around the front of the screen there to increase its durability a little bit. Big jump in prices from the 4965 to the Epix Pro. The 965 costs £600 or $600. The Epix Pro starts at £830 or $900 for the standard models. It will rise all the way up to £1,100 or dollars if you get the very best premium 51mm uh, model with sapphire screen but you can get Sapphire models from £930 or $1,000. Some other big differences in the design are that the Epix Pro has a flashlight built into it across all the models. I'll quickly turn it on there. Ooh, there it is. So every single model of the Epix Pro gets a flashlight. You don't get that on the 965. And the Epix Pro also has Garmin's new heart rate sensor, which has more LEDs in it than the one on the 4965 and essentially promises greater accuracy. Other little design differences, the Epix Pro is 10 ATM waterproof rated, whereas the 965 is 5 ATM. Both watches offer multiband GPS and Garmin's auto select mode to uh, save a little bit of battery life. And on the software front, in general, things will be similar in the future. So the Epix Pro did introduce some new features like hill score and endurance score to Garmin's range, things like uh, a perimeter map view as well. It also brought in a redshift mode that will turn all the colors on the screen to red late at night to preserve night vision. As far as I can tell, all these features are slated to come to the 4965 in time. I'm not sure if redshift mode has been confirmed yet, but you're going to get hill score and endurance score in time. So over time, the software on the two watches will look very similar. Maybe the Epix Pro will be slightly more future-proof in terms of future software updates, but there's nothing that I consider even you know, mildly essential that's likely to be lacking on the 965 front. So you're going to get a similar software experience from both watches. However, there is some difference in the actual experience of using the software because uh, the, you get different watch faces on them. There are some watch faces that are unique to each watch, particularly the Epix Pro has more data-heavy ones available that you can show more stats on, but also the user interface is different. It's a uh, I don't really know how to put it. It's slightly more sporty, I guess, on the 965 and maybe slightly more elegant on the Epix Pro. It's The Epix Pro has the layout and fonts we've seen on Garmin watches for a while, whereas the 965 is something a little bit newer, but it's not a difference that's going to be telling in terms of your experience. It might just be a case of what you prefer or you might just not notice it at all. It's not been a big, big issue for me. Battery life, we'll talk about in a lot more detail during the run test, but as you'd expect, uh, the 965 in terms of battery life is closest to the Epix Pro 47mm watch because that's the same size on each front, but the 965 is a little bit thinner and it does have more battery life. That is yeah, quite impressive. Actually, the 965 in general is pretty good on the battery front. It's listed at lasting seven days, always on, whereas the Epix Pro 47mm is listed at six days. You have got the Epix Pro 51mm model as the big battery option uh, when it comes to the Epix Pro range and against the 4 and a 965. It'll last 11 days with the always on screen activated, so it's a big jump in battery life, but otherwise the uh, 965 will outlast the smaller Epix Pro models. So into that run test with the 4965 and the Garmin Epix Pro. And I will start with the design side of things. And I'll say first and foremost, these are two very nice sports watches to live with. Ultimately, they look very differently. They offer kind of different looks in terms of what you're getting here. But ultimately, they're very nice. And I think they have pluses and minuses on both of these watches. Now, I will start with the 4965 and I would say... Uh, from the point of view that you're getting similar size case to the Epix Pro, but you're getting a bigger screen and you're getting a higher resolution screen. And I think you really notice that in terms of the vibrancy and the brightness and the color that you're getting on the 965 screen compared to the one on the Epix Pro. Now, the Epix Pro screen is absolutely fine as well, just in terms of if you want something that feels a bit bigger, fills that kind of case a little bit more, then you're getting that on the 965, I would say. The other thing I would probably point out 
straps. Now, the straps are really comfortable, but ultimately on the Epix Pro, it's a lot easier to take the straps off of that watch compared to the Garmin 4965. Now, it just, it's a little thing that I think, you know, if you like to customize and change things around, it's a little bit easier to do on the Epix Pro than it is on the 4965. Now, in terms of things like weight, now the Garmin Epix Pro isn't a heavy watch, uh, but ultimately, if you're wanting a watch that feels a little bit lighter to wear, on runs and the 965 definitely offers that in terms of what you're getting on, uh, compared to the Garmin Epix Pro. That's because, you know, although you're getting a kind of a titanium bezel on there now, you know, you're getting less metal there, you're getting less materials there in terms of what you're getting on the Garmin Epix Pro. So it feels a little bit nicer, a little bit lighter to wear. If something that you want to wear to kind of track sleep as well, you know, something nice that's not very bulky to wear either as well when you're tracking sleep. So from that point of view, I think design wise in terms of something that's being light comfortable but also having a nice big screen um, and that's easy to kind of use and look at your data then the Garmin 4965 for me feels a little bit nicer to use personally and offers a little bit more for a little bit less money than the Garmin Epix Pro. The Garmin Epix Pro looks great you've got that nice kind of big bezel there on it you know you've got a um, increase in waterproofing as well I guess as well if that's something that you care about and you've got those straps that are much easier to kind of remove compared to the 965. Um, once you get into the kind of run tracking experience, a lot of the features that you're getting here kind of cross over in terms of what you're getting in the 965 and what you're getting in the Epix Pro. Obviously there's a lot of new things in the Epix Pro that are not on the 965 right now, but looks like most likely they will be at some point. So things like kind of hill score, endurance scores that have kind of debuted on the Epix Pro and the Phoenix uh, 7 Pro as well. Um, things like the kind of improved uh, kind of elements to mapping, so kind of release shading, kind of weather overlays, those kind of things that have, again, been introduced on the um, Phoenix uh, Pro and the Epix Pro are now, or should be at some point, added to the Garmin 4 965. Now, from that kind of pure run tracking experience, for me, it feels very very similar now in terms you know you're getting the same kind of multi-frequency positioning support i found it very very good in 965 when i've tested it i found it the same on the epix pro um and the kind of metrics that are built around that kind of multi-frequency positioning and multi-band mode all feel very, very very good across these watches now in terms of heart rate monitoring performance now obviously in the epix pro it's got the upgraded heart rate sensor that garmin has moved to and i'm sure you'll see that in newer versions of the, you know, future versions of the 4900 series as well. For me, I haven't seen enough in the, the accuracy or level of accuracy, which Garmin has kind of promised in kind of, in, you know, when you're tracking exercise on the Epix Pro, that I've seen a massive difference or jump what I've seen or experienced on the 965. I think if anything, I've seen a more reliable performance in heart rate monitoring on the 965. And I think that comes down to the level of fit that you get on it. The fact that you've got that smaller case, it's a lot easier to kind of wear more comfortably on your wrist as well because of that size uh, as well. It doesn't feel as bulky as the um, Epix Pro. I found the heart rate monitoring is a lot more reliable on the 965 personally for me in terms of my testing. And obviously on both of these watches, you can pair external heart rate monitor sensors and I would be doing it on both fronts um, you know, based on how I've used them, what I've seen in terms of the kind of more high intensity running, things like tracks, intervals. I still think you need that heart rate monitor chest trap because I've, you know, I've just not seen enough to say you can massively 100% rely on these, um, these watches for all runs. I think for some runs and most runs they'll work, not for all runs ultimately. Now in terms of battery life, Obviously, you're getting AMOLED displays here. That does impact on the battery life. Uh, if you have it in always-on mode on both these watches, that's going to see the battery life drop. Uh, without it, using a raise-to-weight gesture, then that's going to see things pushed a little bit further. Now, for me, I think if you're looking for a watch that will last a week, in that raise-to-weight gesture kind of support, then these watches are going to be absolutely fine. If you're using it always-on display mode, that's going to be shorter, maybe four or five days. You're not going to get a full week out of it. But ultimately, if you do want to have that always on display, you're getting more than a couple of days off both of these watches. And I think that is a good sign. If you look at a lot of other smart watches, that's just not something that you're going to get ultimately um, in terms of that performance in between charges. Um, in terms of other things, obviously, those extras you'll get in the Epix Pro, as I said, the software things like Hill Score and Endurance Score, which I think are really nice and presented really nicely, a little bit like you get with training readiness and making it really easy to understand. And those extra kind of mapping elements you're getting as well. Are nice but for me i don't think those are features if i went back to the 4 runner 965 i would massively miss now other thing obviously 
you are getting a flashlight on the Epix Pro, you're not getting a flashlight on the Garmin Front 965. Now, unless you are doing all of your runs, you know, at night, or you're going to be racing a lot at night, then it's not a feature per se that I've missed massively. I do think it's more implemented on the Garmin Epix Pro, but in terms of me going back to the Garmin Front 965 and using that, I don't think it's a feature I'm going to massively miss. You know, if I want that extra kind of hit of light, I've got my phone with me. I've, there's another way I can, you know, have that extra um, bit of brightness that I need if I'm kind of running in kind of darker conditions. But ultimately, in terms of where I'm running and when I'm running, it's not something that I feel like I'm going to massively miss by using the Garmin Front 965. So for me, in terms of my testing of these two watches, I think... First and foremost, I think design-wise, very, very strong. Um, I would say that the uh, 4965 feels a little bit more comfortable to use longer term. Um, you've got a bigger screen. I think, it, you know, the the software that uh, Garmin puts in these watches really kind of works really nicely on the Garmin 4965. And I feel the UI kind of elements that Garmin is starting to introduce on its software, these AMOLED based watches work works really nice on the Garmin 4965. It's still a strong experience on the Epix Pro as well. And obviously you've got those extra software features that will at some point come to the 965 as well. And then just that pure run tracking experience is solid across both. I would say heart rate monitoring performance is not that much between them. I would say probably it's a little bit more reliable than 965 if you're basing it on kind of the wrist-based heart rate um, data. But I'd be going a heart rate uh, monitor chest trap. And then battery life, I think again, whether you're using it in always on display mode, whether you're using the race to wake, you're getting similar levels. I think if you want something that lasts a week with a race to wake, it will. If you want something that lasts four or five days and always on display, that's what you're going to get from both these watches ultimately. So that's not a massive thing to separate from them. But for me personally, I think these are good, strong run tracking watches. Offer them package, you know, they're packaged in very different kind of designs, but ultimately those designs have different kind of benefits uh, for different types of runners. I think some runners, more outdoor centric runners might appeal some of the extras you're getting on the Garmin Epix Pro. Where I think if you just care that pure running focused feel, design, comfort uh, and lightness, then the Garmin Front of 965 is going to appeal a bit more. I've done a lot, lot, lot more running with the 965. It's actually the watch I chose to run London Marathon with, mainly because compared to a few of the other watches I had, it's got this multi-band GPS and I thought it would be a lot better when running around the kind of Canary Wharf bit around buildings where all your GPS drops out. And to be honest, it was great. I think I said in the London Marathon video I did with Nick, the only time it did drop was that kind of mile 20 mark when you're literally coming out of Canary Wharf. It got a little bit ropey around there, but apart from that, the other 25 miles, absolutely perfect, even in the crowd and with all the other runners around me with watches on. So the Forerunner 965 only comes in one, one size and it is quite big on my wrist. I have got the Epix Pro, they don't call it S, do they? They're calling it the Epix Pro 42 millimeters. This is a smaller one. I've got it in this kind of gold sand color, which I do really like. I think it is a really nice colorway. It doesn't really look like a sport watch when I've got it on my wrist at the weekends. The 965, obviously I've got it in this black colorway. It does come in a white, which might look a bit kind of less sport watchy, but it does look very like a sport watch. That's probably, my one of my issues with it that it does it is quite big on my wrist and it does it like a sport watch i wish there was an option to get it in a smaller size but there isn't that said this is lighter so the epix 42 millimeters is 63 grams the forerunner is 53 grams and that's because it's kind of got a plastic casing whereas this has i think it's titanium this is the sapphire version so this is a much kind of harder material whereas this is plastic so it is a bit lighter I would say I am the clumsiest person on the planet. I drop my watches all the time. I smashed a Phoenix once, dropping it in a swimming pool in the changing rooms. I'm a very clumsy person, and this hasn't got any scratches on, considering I've had this for a while now. Um, obviously, this is more hard wearing, so I think if you're someone that is even clumsier than me, or you're doing things like bouldering or rock climbing, you might want a hardier watch. Um, the battery, on um, my 965 is better. So in smartwatch mode, this lasts 23 days, this lasts 10 days. This in GPS mode, this is 31 hours, this is 28 hours. So again, I'm not having to charge either that much, but I feel like I never, ever, ever have to charge the 965. And I feel like you would have to charge the Epix a little bit more, but you know, you could easily go away for a marathon 
weekend and not worry about packing your charger. Um, the water resistance, I think this is where it gets a bit different. The water resistance on the Epix is a bit better. This can go to 100 meters, the 965 can go 50 meters, and the sense is different. Um, the 965 has to elevate V4 sensor. The Epix Pro has Garmin's new sensor. I don't think they've called it the Elevate V5, but it has got more, it's got double the kind of LED lights, um, which Garmin says makes it more accurate. I mean, I have, I am impressed with the heart rate sensor on this. I've worn it with a chest strap and it's been pretty much spot on, but I haven't ever thought that the Elevate V4 has been kind of a bad sensor. Like I've never gone out for a run and felt oh, that was way out. Um, so I don't know, it, it depends if, if having a new sensor really matters to you, then obviously this, this is the one to go for. But for me, they're both good sensors, do you know what I mean? It's Garmin at the end of the day. The only other real difference is, obviously the Epix has the flashlight, which is a really handy tool. I think it's a handy tool just on your watch in general, do you know what I mean? Like when you get up in the middle of the night. But I think it is also handy for things like when I'm running in the winter and it, you, it has different modes so you can kind of have it flashing as your wrist moves. I think it's a great feature. I wish it was on here. But then I do wonder how much you how much you it, it, you weigh up how much that you, that means to you. I am impressed with it. I think it's a cool feature. I haven't actually used it on the run yet because we've been testing testing this in a heat wave. But do you know what I mean? I think it's a cool thing to have. The Epix also has a lot more kind of other sport modes. It's got a lot more water sport profiles which aren't on here, and it has a lot of golf profiles. The chances of me ever playing around a golf are so so slim and then even knowing what I was tracking on a Garmin means it means nothing to me but I think if they're probably the main difference is this has a little bit more for other sports it's got the flashlight and it's got a sensor I think the only other difference from a running perspective on the run is you can get nine you can see nine data fields on the Epix whereas you can only see six on the Forerunner six is still a lot but do you mean if you're I would personally, I, would, I, I only have six on both, but I know that there are, you can, there are the option to have more on the Epix. So I think both of these watches have really nice designs in their own little way. Like I think they are gonna to appeal to slightly different people. Like the 965 is noticeably thinner, lighter on the wrist. It's just a, a very sleek watch you pull on and forget about. Right now, it's been really noticeable that that's been a benefit because it's been a bit hotter in the UK and it's nicer to have the lighter, thinner watch on your wrist. The Epix Pro has that metal bezel and the more, premium design i guess a lot of people will prefer that but i think also probably equal amounts of people might prefer the overall design of the 965 because it is that little bit lighter the epix pro is one of those watches going to catch you know your hoodie every time you pull it on it's a big watch it's more noticeable on the wrist whereas the 965 is much more unobtrusive it probably suits me a little bit better as someone with quite thin wrists and the fact it is so light is great it feels almost like one of the uh smaller forerunners in the range like the 265 or even the 55 because it is so light on the wrist but then you've got that big screen and all the features packed into what is a thin light watch screen is great on it like it's noticeable that it is really large on the 965 and it's you know the fact it's comparable to the epix pro 51 millimeters which i think is um really impressive for a thin watch with pretty good battery life it's well designed watch Garmin's done really well here with this to make it so thin light and have more battery life than the 47 millimeter epix while also having the screen of the larger epix pro i do like how big it is and you know that is a noticeable benefit when you're comparing it to the same size model in the epix pro range gps is a wash between these two the uh it's top drawer in both both have garmin's multiband mode and it's you know the best of any brand on the market. I use the uh, auto select mode quite a lot now and that's really accurate as well while saving a little bit of battery life. On the heart rate front, the Epix is better. Like the new heart rate sensor has been really impressive for me. I've done over a month of running with it now, nearly always without any kind of chest strap or heart rate sensor linked to it. And I've noticed very few glaring errors. I used it for a race at the weekend and compared it to a chest strap's readings. And what I saw there was quite typical basically, where it's got a slight bit of lag compared to a chest strap. And that's noticeable at the start of a race where you sprint out the blocks and your heart rate rises really quickly. The uh, Epix Pro optical heart rate monitor will take a little while to catch up. And then if there's little bumps and intervals in your run and you really surge and then come back down, it will lag behind a chest strap a little bit, but it doesn't really miss anything. Like I've had maybe one or two missed intervals during my entire time testing it. And that's certainly a better optical heart rate performance than you got from the 4965. It's still a decent optical heart rate monitor, but it's gonna miss things more often. It made more mistakes, would read a little bit high in runs more regularly. And probably the mistakes in the 965 were big enough that it might end up reclassifying the run in training analysis, whereas I never had that problem with the Epix Pro. So if you're gonna purely use optical heart rate tracking, the Epix Pro is definitely better than the 4965 in my opinion. However, 
Overall, I would still link a chest strap to both to get the absolute best accuracy in myself, um, in which case, you know, it doesn't really matter which watch you use, but on the optical front, the Epix Pro has little advantage. On the battery life, I found that the Epix Pro 47 millimeters would last me five days uh, on a charge with the always on screen enabled, running almost every day, notifications coming in, uh, that kind of thing. The Epix Pro 51 millimeter model though, did last me 10 days on a charge in the same conditions. And that's, so that's a massive jump in battery life on the 51 millimeter model, whereas the 965 slips in in between them. It was lasting me six, sometimes seven days on a charge with the always on screen enabled, again, in the same conditions. I do think that's very impressive that it lasts longer than the 47 millimeter Epix Pro, despite um, being such a thin, lightweight watch with a bigger screen. It doesn't get to the numbers you're gonna get from the 51 millimeter Epix. All those numbers can be substantially extended by using the raise to wake on them. If you're using raise to wake, actually the 965 is gonna last you a couple of weeks. The 51 millimeter Epix Pro is gonna get close to three weeks. If you only get a big jump in battery life across the board. But overall, in terms of comparing these watches, the 965, does beat out the same size Epix Pro models and smaller models, but if you're looking purely on battery life, then it's the Epix Pro 51 millimeter that, re that really stands out as the uh, best battery life I've come across for an AMOLED sports watch of this standard. Other than that, you know, you are getting a very similar Garmin experience all around. You're not gonna get the flashlight on the 965, you know, when that is useful, it is very useful to have a flashlight on your wrist, but for the most part, it's not something that makes a big difference to me in my lifestyle, but there'll be people who are outdoors a lot more than me, especially at night when that flashlight is very handy. So my verdicts, I think hands down, unless you're really into golf or you're really into water sports, the 965 is a better choice here. It's about £400, $400 cheaper than the Epix Pro and you're getting so many of the same features. You've got the same bright screen, it's lighter, it's got a bet better battery life. I think unless you really want those extra sport modes, you're, there's probably not there's nothing really different. Sure, you're getting a new heart rate sensor, but the heart rate sensor on this is still fantastic anyway. And you're getting a flashlight. For 400 pounds, you could buy an amazing torch. I just think, as, as impressive as the Epix Pro is, I think if you really care about a gold bezel or you want a smaller watch, sure. But I think for the money, the 965, you're getting so much from it. I can't justify spending 400 pound more on this. One thing that is different is that this current, the Epix Pro, when the Epix Pro and the Phoenix 7 Pro launched, Garmin announced their endurance score and their hill score features. I imagine they will be rolled out to the 965 because Garmin are really good at rolling out firmware updates. And I think it will come to the 965 just because it's their kind of premium forerunner and it's such a new watch. So I think then you're still gonna have the same features. And until then, I don't think you're getting that much from a hill score and endurance score. You have to weigh up how much you care about having fancier, harder wearing materials on your watch and things like golf and water sports. And if they don't mean that much to you, you're getting such a good watch with the 965. I love this watch, so I would go for this one. On value alone, I think the 965 is the very clear pick of these two watches as all the features that are really important available on both of them on a really nice, lightweight, good looking watch with a bigger screen than on the same size Epix Pro model and really quite impressive battery life as well. There are some extras on the Epix Pro like the flashlight and the heart rate monitor, but they're not such a big deal, I think, and you're paying quite a lot for those extras. Whereas with the 965, you're going to get a really amazing tracking experience for a lot less. I also just like the look of the 965 myself. I, you know, it's a sportier look than the kind of classier Epix but with that titanium bezel, it's not like a really plasticky and unpleasant watch to look at or anything like that. I think it's a pretty good looking watch and it's so much lighter and less noticeable on the wrist. I tend to prefer wearing it anyway. So even not looking at value, at the moment I've got all these watches in before I return them to Garmin. I prefer wearing the 965 day to day anyway. It's the one I've been wearing. So unless you're a really big fan of the look of the Epix Pro and like the heft of a big watch on your wrist, I actually prefer the 965 design. I said the thing that's quite different with the Epix Pro range is the different sizes and the Epix Pro 51 millimeter watch really is a step up on everything we've seen before on the AMOLED front just because of that battery life. Now, it's a big watch. You're gonna have to get used to wearing a big watch on your wrist. I don't really mind that, actually. I didn't mind it. I did prefer going to the smaller, lighter 965, but it's not that big a deal to wear the Epix Pro. It's not that heavy a watch, especially if you use a nylon band. You can get those quite cheap on eBay and that kind of thing. And that does offer that massive battery life. That said, the 965 battery life is really quite good and it's so much cheaper. And actually, for the same size screen, it's a much smaller watch uh, and a nicer watch to wear day to day, I'd say. So yeah, I would go for the 965. I think it's uh, just the best watch going from anyone. It's actually very good value in Garmin's range because it packs in so many features that you're getting on much more expensive watches for £600 or $600. And I really like its lightweight design. I like the user interface on it, which feels sporty and colorful. Converse will be true for lots of people. They'll prefer the look, feel, and design of the Epix Pro. 
and then you get those extras like the uh, heart rate sensor and the uh, flashlight as well and then on the 51 millimeter model you also get the uh, big battery life so my verdict on the garmin epix pro and the garmin 4965 in which one i would go if it was my money based on now having been able to test these two watches knowing what's going to happen down the line in terms of the software features that are going to come to the 4965 I would be going back to the 49065. I think it's the watch I will be going back to after my test in the Phoenix Pro and the Epix Pro. And why I would say that is I think, you know, from a pure running focus point of view or centric point of view, it gives you everything you need in terms of performance, in terms of battery life, in terms of design. Having, I think that bigger screen feels nicer to use as well and kind of absorb that data. And you're getting things like mapping there as well, you know, that you get on the Epix Pro. For me, I think that works a little bit nicer. The, the main reason I would be going for the Epix Pro over the Garmin 4965 is if I really cared about that flashlight, that watch strap being a little bit easier to remove as well as a nice thing to have as well. All those extras or new extras that you're getting out of the box on the Epix Pro that will at some point come to the 965, hopefully not too long um, down the line. I should say then those are some reasons to go for the um epix pro but for me i think if you compare the 47 millimeter epix pro to the 965 how much the 965 costs and what you're getting from a run perspective then i think that would be the watch i'd be going and ultimately for me that is a watch i'm going to be going back to in terms of my day-to-day -day use and what i'll be using to train with to do my runs and to race with as well so say the epix pro is not a bad watch and if you like that kind of Phoenix style watch uh, with a, an AMOLED display, that kind of more kind of bold design, um, obviously those extra elements of um, software support that you're getting right, you know, as I said, out of the box, then that would be a reason. And the flashlight as well, if you care about that. But for me, I think my money, I'd be going for the 4965.